Make It Right, the manufacturing podcast. Welcome to the Make It Right podcast. I'm Janet Eastman, and this week our guest is John Madsen. He's the vice president and manufacturing practice leader at Blackline Group. They provide R&D tax credit expertise to companies, and he's here to share how manufacturing companies can gain tens of thousands of dollars to reinvest and become more competitive, grow faster, and increase profitability. Well, money is always a strong motivator, so welcome, John. Well, thank you so much, Janet. It's a pleasure to be here today. Great to have you on the show. So tell me a little bit about your background, because I know you worked for 40 years in machining, stamping, and sheet metal. So give me an idea of of where you've been. Absolutely. Um, Yes, I've been in um, machining. I actually started in the late 70s in machining while I was going to school for tool and die. And uh, during those years, I just continually continually improved myself, uh, went back to college, and uh, Ended up in the later years running an $11 million stamping and fabrication company. So all of those uh, twists and turns and journeys in my education and manufacturing career has built a very strong base for helping manufacturers with this very well-kept secret called R&D tax credits. Yeah. So how long were you actually running a company on your own? Uh, About four years. Uh, before that, I was an engineering manager. I was a tool designer. I ran the tool room for a while, uh, ran the sales and marketing for a while. Those were kind of my dark years going to manu- you know, from manufacturing to marketing. But I uh, came to my senses and uh, went back to run the manufacturing company. Right. So when did you actually come to understand the value of the R&D tax credit? Sure. The value of the R&D tax credit was um, introduced to me when I was still the general manager of that manufacturing company. And uh, during the process, it was you know, hard to believe that uh, the government would take a portion of the taxes we were paying at that time, both state and federal, and basically reinvest part of that back into our company to help us you know, with some different initiatives or buy equipment or do whatever we could to be, you know, just a little bit more competitive or grow faster or increase our profitability. So how arduous was it for you to, to, you know, get a grasp of how the tax credit works? Because um, in the past, I've talked to companies about tax credits and some of them just get bogged down in the, oh my goodness, the paperwork and understanding it and blah, blah, blah it's not really worth the effort to me to do this when it is actually financially worth the effort, but it's, it just seems to be like this massive thing you have to plow through. Is that the case? Actually, uh, at Blackline Group, we've simplified it as much as possible. Uh, we are used to taking large data dumps from manufacturers, and uh, with some of their assistance, we do a lot of the sorting. So, yes, it can be especially if your company is under 5 million or you have less than 25 employees, it can be a challenge. I will agree with that. But uh, if you're, again, in that 3 to 5 million to 100 million, uh, there are some great opportunities for you with the R&D tax credit. So how do companies actually generally use the money that's saved through a tax credit? Do they reinvest Uh, it? Yes, um, many of them are set up to reinvest it. Uh, there is a company we worked with, and basically, once they claimed those R and D credits the very first time, uh, what they did was they reinvested it in some new equipment. They bought some machining centers. Uh, they bought a 3D printer. Uh, they bought another company that was similar to their size. So they reinvested in in those opportunities. And in turn, what that did was basically uh, improve their efficiencies, you know, especially with uh, the new equipment purchases. When, in fact, the employees started seeing new equipment come into their shops, there was 
you know, a sense of a buzz, just a little bit more excitement on the shop floor and throughout the company. And even with that 3D printer, the the manufacturer now was developing new products much, much quicker, which allowed them to acquire new customers, which allowed them to hire more employees, which gave them a much larger R&D tax credit. So that's kind of the, the, the picture of the cycle that I see occurring in many, many manufacturing companies. How long does this actually take when you talk about, okay, so they started getting the tax credit and then you mentioned, okay, so one day they're able to actually buy another company. They couldn't have done that with one year's tax credit, could they? Uh, actually, it was a small company and yes, they did. Wow. So okay. we are seeing in some cases, um, you know, like when you start talking about the true tax credit benefit, uh, I've helped a company that was a uh, sheet metal manufacturer making custom products. They were about $11 million in revenue. And w- through this process, they were able to amend or go back three years, which is standard practice for somebody that has not used the R&D tax credit. So again, $11 million in revenue. And we found them $1.3 million that they were able to use. Uh, that particular company bought a uh, turf press and a brake press and put a substantial amount of that money away for kind of a rainy day. So this is, you know, truly more than just pennies. There's, you know, opportunities for companies to really get some, some great benefits to improve their company. Mm -hmm. So are they actually reinvesting uh, to make the improvements? Are they moving into industry 4.0 and things like that? Uh, Yes. Yes. They're, they're, you know, some of these companies have used equipment or out of date equipment. So to, again, to be competitive in the marketplace, um, you know, some of them are going to slowly fade away unless they reinvest back in their business and you know today with steel tariffs and so many regulations that draw their attention so many directions uh, you know it's sometimes difficult for them to put away enough money to make a major improvement when you know three or four or five items on the shop floor could use an upgrade mm-hmm. this is that shot in the arm or that boost that gives them uh, a little bit of a leap forward to uh, make those investments yeah. You're talking about the company that actually went out and bought a 3D printer. Have you seen a company, you know, when they first started using the tax credit, they had these type of products. And then as they used the tax credit and evolved, have you seen them move completely away from their old way of doing business into a completely new stream of business that has transformed them because their industry actually needed to change? Uh, actually, yes. They're, uh... There's a small case study that we talk about, and it's a company that uh, was started by this particular gentleman's father. And I know a a lot of the generations that may be listening will not understand this, and I apologize. But back in the day, there used to be outdoor theaters, and this company manufactured the speaker that you would take off the post and actually hang on, on the inside of your car on the window. I remember that, John. (laughs) (laughs) Those were the days, baby. (laughs) Those were the days. Well, anyhow, you know, if they'd have stayed in that generation and stayed with that product line, you know, clearly they would be obsolete. So using the R&D tax credit, they are now building uh, unique sound systems for uh, very expensive homes, theater rooms, and things of that nature. So. One of the companies that uh, that they purchased was a sound testing company. So what they're doing now is they were able to go in, for example, if a church is putting in a new sound system or an auditorium uh, type system or a school, you know, of that nature, they're able to bring this testing equipment in dial it right into what exactly would be needed for everyone in the auditorium to hear clearly 
and they go back and manufacture it. So uh, I guess that could be an example of how the R&D credits has, have helped that company basically transform and stay current with technology. That's amazing. I mean, they're a totally different company now. Like they Absolutely. Just- yeah, because what they were doing was not even considered, well, I suppose it was outdoor theater, but, you know, that big metal speaker blasting on the uh, window of your car <laughs> uh, so you could watch a movie at the drive-in into, like, really high-end home theater. I remember the audio on those things. They were not great. So they really, <laughs> really have transformed their business. Absolutely. Um, from what they're telling me, the audio systems that they produce and install uh, many times cost more than the average person's home. So they have uh, really stepped up in the technology world. Wow. Wow. So you're speaking specifically about tax credits in the U.S., and I know that there are tax credits here in Canada. Um, How common are they in other countries? Do you know? Uh, Actually, I and there's about 44 countries uh, that are participating in some way, shape, or form in R&D tax credits. Of course, the U.S. and Canada, which you've mentioned, but uh, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, the U.K., South Africa, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, uh, Norway, Sweden, Australia, just to name a few. So, uh, yes, uh, the basic structure of qualifying may vary slightly, but uh, 44 countries are participating in some form of R&D tax credit. Wow. When you think about it, and in Canada, it's happened, in the States, it's happened. We've seen a lot of offshoring, manufacturing, going to other countries where it can be done cheaper. You bring in a tax credit that keeps manufacturing going in countries like America and in Canada. That is a huge boost for the economy, isn't it? Absolutely, because, you know, at the end of the day, the government is interested in business. They're interested in innovation. They want to, you know, going back to that uh, original example, if you have a company investing in equipment, that, you know, again, was going to produce jobs down the value stream. Uh, It's going to improve efficiencies. People are going to upgrade equipment. They're going to hire more employees. They're going to hire more high-tech employees to run this new equipment. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, many times people look at manufacturing as kind of a dirty industry, where in reality, you see a lot of uh, training and, and new technology going in. You've got to have people that are able to program and operate this equipment. So, yes, it's it's a game changer for manufacturing. We talk a lot on this podcast about employee engagement. And when you see a company reinvest in their people, in their equipment, and bring in new technologies to grow the business, that has to be something that the employees are just quite simply buoyed by. Yeah, many times what we see are businesses, especially smaller businesses that are stagnant from year to year to year, not a lot of increase in sale, but not a lot of decrease in sale, not a lot of change in equipment, but all of a sudden you start bringing new pieces of equipment in, you know, that gives them the opportunity to say, hey, you know, something's going on here and get very excited about their employer. Yeah, and it's change that is appealing as opposed to scary, right? Because they know that maybe their job is going to still be there, whereas the alternative, it's not going to be, right? Correct, correct. So how have you seen the industries change? Like You've worked in manufacturing, you said um, in machining and stamping over a number of years, but you're out there, you're talking to a lot of manufacturing companies. Is the attitude Uh, really positive right now? Yes. Um, You know, you talked about uh, starting 30 years ago, um, we had in our shop, you know, 20 tool makers that would cut tools and dies by hand, send them to heat treat, 
bring them back and do filing to realign the tools once heat treat kind of distorted them to where we're looking at, you know, wire EDM and the different technologies today. Um, has it been a game changer? Yes. Uh, when we when we kind of look back at how manufacturing has changed, um, you know, even there, where is it going in the future would be an, another question. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing to the point today that um, many manufacturing companies are looking for employees. They're looking for skilled people to bring into the shop. Um, we're finding that, you know, a lot of in the U.S., a lot of high schools and junior high schools used to have, you know, industrial arts, which you know, at some point was removed from the schools. And, you know, everybody wanted their kids to go to college and, and have a great job. And what we're finding now is, you know, there's a certain percentage that just cannot make it in, in college. And, you know, if you would go back to the tech schools and uh, tech colleges and invest time into a skilled trade, I mean, there is a great opportunity to come out many times with scholarships to pay for that schooling and, you know, grow this industry. Again, it's not a dirty manufacturing is not a dirty word, but it's an opportunity to grow our industry and employment is you know, out there for for these younger people that are interested in this industry. And the skilled trades now, it's a good paying job, isn't it? It is a very good paying job. Um, we have a lot of manufacturers that are not only giving scholarships, but they will take, um, you know, for example, one of my better up and coming employees back when I was in the stamping industry came to me, he was a Burger King manager, and he was just tired of that industry. And he was a sharp kid. We brought him in for kind of that GL or, or general labor area, and he progressed his way up to programming and running a turret press. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so manufacturing in America is not dead. And uh, it's just that people have to change their attitudes towards that industry and realize the, the opportunity that is there. Absolutely. I think Mike Pence uh, back in April said there's like 12.4 million Americans that, that work in the manufacturing industry. So, you know, just the opposite. There's a shortage of workers, especially in these small manufacturing companies. So if we had uh, the opportunity to encourage uh, younger younger people to at least explore that option. Uh, the employment is available for them. Automation is a great field to get into. And ultimately, I guess when you you look at these R and D tax credits, which is what we started talking about in the first place, if people start using those, they can see the cash that can be generated from those tax credits, and begin transforming their businesses. Absolutely. With the R&D tax credit, uh, what we typically do is provide all of the information, the forms, help the client, and kind of be the liaison to their CPA. We're not here to replace their CPA, but help them through the process. And at the end of the day, you know, if a client, yeah, you know, I'm just going to pick numbers out of the air, owed fifty thousand dollars at the end of the year in taxes and we provided the documentation that said you know they earned sixty thousand in r d credits their tax bill for that particular year would be zero and the additional ten thousand would roll forward into next year uh, this could roll forward at least in the u.s for up to 20 years so you won't lose that opportunity. But again, it's almost an instant credit. So the money that these manufacturers were accruing for at the end of the year to pay taxes, now they can use that money to reinvest at some other place. Wow. That's excellent. And I think there's a, a brilliant opportunity for manufacturing in America. John, I really appreciate the time you've taken to talk to us on the Make It Right podcast. Uh, very interesting. I'm sure you'll find that uh, people will be investigating the R&D tax credits uh, 
in the future. Thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you for your time. John Madsen is the Vice President and Manufacturing Practice Leader at Blackline Group. They provide R&D tax credit expertise to companies, and uh, he has just told us how you can save yourself a lot of money and reinvest it into your business. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening to the Make It Right podcast. Uh, We'll uh, be here again next week. 